Hi everyone. Today another video in carbonyl group series looking at acylation. So acylation is the process by which an acyl group is introduced into another molecule. Now the acyl group we denote as RCO. So we have our carbonyl group, our C double bond O, but also attached to that we have a carbon-based group, an R group. So it's slightly different, just a normal carbonyl group is a C double bond O. We find the carbonyl group in aldehydes, in ketones, in carboxylic acids, in esters. The acyl group has a carbon group attached to that carbonyl group. Now there are a group of compounds called acid derivatives, and these all have the acyl group as part of their structure. The reason that they're called an acid derivative is that they essentially look a bit like a carboxylic acid, but we've just taken the OH part of that molecule. And so two of the most important are acid chlorides and acid anhydrides. And so you can uh, see the structure of these molecules at the bottom right. So an acid chloride has our acyl group, a carbonyl group, and an R group. And also attached to our acyl group is a chlorine. Our anhydride has that acyl group, and then bonded to it essentially is almost what looks like another acyl group. Now, these compounds are like the other carbonyl compounds we've seen, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids and esters, they're also strongly electrophilic. We have our delta positive carbon in each case because we have our, uh, our big electronegativity difference between carbon and oxygen. That creates our very strong dipole, our polar bond. And so our carbon is electron deficient, delta positive. It's acting as an electrophile. And so it's very readily attacked by nucleophilic reagents. Uh, and when we do this, the nucleophile replaces what we call the leaving group. Now, at the top here, I've denoted the leaving group just as Z. It's called the leaving group because it's what leaves from the molecule when we add our nucleophile in. Uh, and you can see down at the bottom in the acid chloride and the anhydride, I've also coloured in the leaving group in red. So you can see that if we add a nucleophile to an acid chloride, our Cl is what leaves. It leaves as a, a chloride anion. And in our anhydride, we end up kicking off this carboxylate anion. And so the rate at which this reaction of a nucleophile uh, attacking our, our, our acyl group, essentially, um, the rate of it is dependent on three factors. The first is the magnitude of that delta positive charge on the carbon. And that essentially is related to the electronic properties of the leaving group. What we're looking at here is how electron deficient is that carbon atom. Essentially, it's almost kind of related to how readily that leaving group can be lost, which is the second point here. If the leaving group can be lost more readily, if it's more easier to get rid of it, then obviously the reaction will uh, take place quicker. And thirdly, how good the nucleophile is. If we have a better nucleophile, a stronger nucleophile, so it's more likely, uh, something that more readily will um, donate an electron pair, then we're gonna have a faster rate of reaction. So as I said, factors one and two are related. Groups that strongly attract electrons, think things that we normally think of as electronegative, they tend to form stable negative ions. And that makes sense, right? If we kick off, in the case of the acid chloride uh, Cl, we're kicking it off as a chloride anion. Our pair of electrons from the C-Cl bond both move on to the chlorine. That creates the chloride anion. And that's happy to accept those electrons. We've seen in not just the mechanisms in this set of videos, but across the kind of organic set of videos, that generally we have lots of arrows that start from a, a, a middle of a bond and end up on electronegative atoms such as carbon, nitrogen or, or halogens. And so the reason for this is because we have these groups are electronegative, they're happy to accept these electrons, they strongly attract electrons anyway, and they form stable negative ions. And if this is the case, then they are good leaving groups. They're happy to be kicked off uh, as a negative ion. Now, the leaving group, the part that I've shown in red for the acid chloride and the acid anhydride, they withdraw electrons very strongly from the carbonyl carbon. We can think of our chlorine as being fairly electronegative, and so that's going to withdraw electrons from our, our central carbon, our carbonyl carbon, makes it very delta positive. And also, you can see that our leaving group of the anhydride is essentially a carboxylate anion. That is also very electron withdrawing. We have essentially another CO double bond in that system that's going to be withdrawing electrons as well. And so these compounds are very reactive towards nucleophiles. Um, and as we've seen in uh, other videos in this series, the type of reaction we're going to see here is a nucleophilic addition elimination reaction. So our mechanism is that we take uh, our nucleophile, 
We take the nucleophilic part of that, the lone pair or a negative charge, depending on what our nucleophile is. We draw an arrow from our lone pair to the delta positive carbon, the electrophilic part of the molecule. Remember the arrows show electron pair movement going from high electron density to low electron density. Carbon can only have four bonds, so we have to break the weakest bond in the system. The weakest bond is the pi component of the carbon oxygen bond. So we have an arrow from the centre of the carbon oxygen bond ending up at the oxygen. This is a similar idea to what we've just talked about. The idea the oxygen is happy to accept the electron pair because it's an electronegative atom anyway. Remember that all steps have to balance in terms of charge and in terms of atoms. So we have an overall neutral uh, electrophile, an overall neutral uh, or an overall negative nucleophile, sorry, in this case. So overall we have a negative charge. And so we, we therefore need to have a negative charge uh, on our, our molecule. It goes onto the oxygen, that's the electronegative atom. And so then that's the nucleophilic addition part of it. It's a nucleophilic addition elimination mechanism. So we need to eliminate in this next step. And so all we're going to do is reform that carbon oxygen double bond, reform the carbonyl group by taking an arrow from the lone pair, the negative charge on the oxygen, down into the middle of the CO bond to show the formation of the double bond. Then carbon can only have four bonds, so we have to break the weakest bond, which is the carbon Z bond. We have to kick off the leaving group. So we have uh, an arrow from the centre of the, um, the carbon Z bond, ending up on the Z, ending up on the leaving group. And again, same reason that this will tend to be a group that attracts electrons, maybe an electronegative atom that's happy to accept the electrons and become a stable negative ion. And so overall, we've replaced whatever the Z was, whatever the leaving group was, with our nucleophile. So the third factor to look at in the uh, how it affects the rate of these acylation reactions is to look at the strength of the nucleophiles. Now, nucleophiles often have lone pairs of electrons, which they use to attack an electron deficient carbon. The electron deficient carbon is our electrophile. Um, and nucleophiles can be neutral, they can be negatively charged. Even if they're negatively charged, what the negative charge is often representing is a lone pair of electrons. And so the best nucleophiles are the ones that are best at donating that lone pair. And so the order of reactivity of some common uh, neutral nucleophiles is that a primary amine is a stronger, a better nucleophile than ammonia, that's stronger than an alcohol, and that's stronger than water. And there are two conclusions that we can draw from this. The first is that nitrogen-based donors, amines and ammonia, are better nucleophiles than oxygen-based donors, alcohols and water. And the reason for this is simply because nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen. Remember, when we think about electronegativity uh, in a bond, we're thinking about how, uh, how strongly an atom can kind of bring the electrons towards itself, attract the electrons towards itself in a covalent bond. But we can also think about it in terms of if we just have electrons on an atom, how tightly does it hold on to those electrons? And so nitrogen being less electronegative than oxygen holds on to its lone pair of electrons slightly less tightly, slightly less well than oxygen does. And so therefore the nitrogen lone pair is more readily donated, it's more readily available to be able to be used to make a bond to an electrophile. The second conclusion is that if we have alcohol groups attached, so for example a primary amine versus ammonia, or an alcohol versus water, if we have an R group rather than a hydrogen, that that increases the nuclear felicity, that makes it a better nucleophile. And the reason for that, as we've seen in some of the other videos in the uh, organic series, is something called the inductive effect. Alcohol groups have this tendency to sort of release their electrons, to push their electrons away from themselves slightly. And what that means is that we increase the electron density on the adjacent atom. So if we take an amine versus ammonia, that R group that's in the primary amine, that carbon-based group, due to the inductive effect, is able to kind of just push its electrons away from itself slightly, and it increases the electron density on the nitrogen. If we increase the electron density on the nitrogen atom, that essentially makes our lone pair more readily donated. We're more able to donate some electron density. Now, all of these nucleophiles are neutral, and so if we do a nucleophilic addition elimination reaction, one of these acylation reactions, we have to lose a hydrogen ion during the reaction. The reason for that is because we have a neutral nucleophile, we're going to have a neutral electrophile in our, in our, um, in our acyl group essentially, whether that be an acid chloride or an anhydride, they're both neutral. And so overall we're neutrally charged, 
we're going to kick off our leaving group as an anion, either the carboxylate anion from an anhydride or a chloride anion from an acid chloride. And so because we have a negative charge there, the resulting species that we've added our nucleophile into must be positive, and we turn that into a neutral species by losing a hydrogen ion. And so if we take our acid chloride or our acid anhydride, something with an acyl group in, and we react it with ammonia, then the product will be an amide. Remember that an amide has a carbonyl group that is attached to uh, some nitrogen-based group, essentially an amine that has bonded to a carbonyl group. If the nucleophile is an amine, then the product is what we call an N-substituted amide. This is where we have another carbon group coming off our nitrogen rather than a hydrogen. If the nucleophile is an alcohol, the product is an ester, which we looked at in the previous, set of, uh, previous video. And if the nucleophile is water, then the product is a carboxylic acid, which we also looked at in the previous video. Remember that a carboxylic acid has a carbonyl group and then an OH group attached. An ester has a carbonyl group and then uh, a single bonded oxygen connected to an alkyl chain. So if we look at the mechanism, the general mechanism is shown below, and it doesn't really matter what the electrophile is, whether it's an acid chloride, whether it's uh, acid anhydride, or maybe some other species that has the acyl group in with a good leaving group. And it doesn't matter what our nucleophile is, really, the same general mechanism applies. So while the reagents may change, the chemistry doesn't. So our mechanism, just to go through it again, is to take our nucleophile, we take our lone pair of our nucleophile, that's our electron density, arrow from there to the delta positive carbon, the electrophilic part of that molecule, the electron deficient part. Carbon can only have four bonds, so we have to break the weakest bond, which is the CO uh, pi bond. So arrow from the centre of that CO bond onto the electronegative oxygen. Then we then create this tetrahedral intermediate, make sure that we balance in terms of charge. We have overall and negative charge, and so our negative charge goes onto our oxygen. That's what that second arrow has represented. The electron pair moving from the CO bond into the uh, CO pi bond onto the oxygen atom to make it negatively charged. So that's our nucleophilic addition. Remember that the mechanism is nucleophilic addition elimination. So we have to have our elimination part of it. So we reform the CO double bond from an arrow from our lone pair on the oxygen, the negative charge on the oxygen, into the middle of the CO bond. Again, carbon can only have four bonds, and so we kick off the leaving group, our Z in this case as a negatively charged ion. So uh, an arrow from the centre of that carbon Z bond onto the electronegative Z atom. And so overall, we have kicked off our leaving group and we've replaced it with our nuclear phi. Now, when we think about the uses of acylation, the, uh, the molecule ethanoic anhydride, which is shown at the bottom right, is manufactured on a really large scale. And it has several advantages over another similar reagent called ethanol chloride. Now we've looked at both of these as acylating reagents. They can both act, they both have that acyl group in the, the CO double bond connected to some carbon group. But while ethanol chloride actually is a better, more, a more reactive uh, acylating agent, the ethanoic anhydride is more widely used. And there are several reasons. The first is an economic one. Ethanoic anhydride is cheaper, simply. The second is that it's a bit safer to handle, it's less corrosive than ethanol chloride. The third is that because it's a slightly less uh, reactive acylating agent, it doesn't react as readily with water. Now, ethanoic anhydride is still a fairly reactive acylating agent, we can still use it to do the acylation, uh, acylation reactions, but because it's slightly less reactive with water, we don't have to worry so much about having a really complicated practical setup where we have to exclude water from our reaction. And the really key one, I suppose, is that it's actually safer to use doing an acylation reaction. As we said, if we have a neutral nucleophile that we add in, we have to lose a hydrogen from that. The hydrogen will attach onto the leaving group. And so the leaving group from an acid chloride is a chloride anion. So combining that with a proton makes HCl, hydrogen chloride. That's very toxic. For ethanoic anhydride, well, the byproduct is ethanoic acid. And so that's a much safer byproduct. And ethanoic acid is also the acid that's in, in vinegar. So it's also a useful product. It's not just a, a byproduct that we can throw away. It's also something that we can probably sell on as well. So time to have a go at a question. Just one question this time to name and outline the mechanism for a reaction between propanol chloride and methylamine. So if you want to have a go, pause the video and the answer will be on the next slide. 
So this is again an acylation reaction. It's a nucleophilic addition elimination reaction. So we take our uh, methylamine, NH2ME, a primary amine. It's a nucleophilic species. We've got a lone pair on our nitrogen. Our propanol chloride is our acid chloride. Propanol chloride meaning we've got three carbons and we count the carbon on carbon, remember, as one of those carbons of the chain. And so that's our electrophilic molecule. We have a very, very delta positive carbon, our electron deficient carbon. So we have our arrow from the lone pair, the NH2, onto the delta positive carbon. Carbon can only have four bonds, so we have an arrow from the centre of that CO bond onto the electronegative oxygen. That's the weakest part there, the pi component of that bond. That breaks the electrons move on to the electronegative oxygen. We have to conserve our charge, so overall we're neutral. So we have a, a negative charge now on our oxygen. We have to have a positive charge somewhere else, and the positive charge is on the nitrogen because we've now made four bonds to that nitrogen, so it's positively charged. That's the nucleophilic addition part. Remember, it's a nucleophilic addition elimination mechanism. And so we need to reform our carbonyl group. So an arrow from the negative charge on the oxygen to the centre of the CO bond. Again, carbon can only have four bonds. So we kick off our leaving group. It's happy to be kicked off as a negative ion because it's an electronegative atom that attracts the electrons. And so an arrow from the centre of that carbon chlorine bond onto the chlorine. So this eliminates uh, Cl. And then this isn't the final product now because we still um, eliminate Cl minus, sorry, and then this isn't the final product because we still have a positive charge. We still have our positively charged nitrogen. Our stable product, our neutral product, is going to be where we just have a neutral nitrogen. And so in order to do this, we have to lose uh, a proton, as we've said. And one of the ways that this could happen is for another uh, molecule of our primary amine to come in and deprotonate it. The primary amine is not only a nucleophile, but also a base. It can accept a proton. So we have an arrow from our lone pair on our nitrogen to uh, one of the hydrogens on that nitrogen base group. And then we have an arrow uh, from the centre of that NH bond onto the electronegative nitrogen. We can't attack the positively charged nitrogen directly because uh, the nitrogen has eight electrons. It's not electron deficient. We don't have any empty orbitals, and so we need to actually just kick off one of the hydrogens attached. And we, the way we do that essentially is by the primary amine acting as a base, removing a proton. And so this ends up then producing, uh, in this case, our N substituted amide. So remember that if it's a primary amine, uh, the product that we end up with is an N substituted amide. And so this is known as N methyl propanamide. And we also have our, our byproduct here. Uh, of um, this ionic salt of NH3Me positive ion and Cl minus. So thank you for watching this video. You can find many more videos like this on my YouTube channel. If you found the video helpful, please leave a review on one of my tuition websites. I offer online tuition for chemistry, so if you're interested in that, you can check out the pages as well. And if you need any more help with your chemistry, feel free to drop me an email. I'll be happy to help.